In my last video, I was able to fix the F14 and F24 fold codes for my Mealy dishwasher uh, by replacing two parts. I suspect that it was going to be the pressure switch, uh, but I also changed the heater relay since I was already there. Uh, I am going to confirm today that it is in fact a pressure switch by doing some tests on it. Uh, for that, you're going to need the documentation and we're gonna to refer to page 154 where we have a schematic diagram. I, as, I also have a multimeter with me. We're going to be using the ohm meter function for it uh, and some leads alligator clips here to make this uh, circuit complete. Now the first thing to find out here is that pins 11 and 12 are normally close, meaning that they're not activated, uh, they're activated without the water now. And when the water gets into the pressure switch, then it'll close to make a circuit between 11 and 14. The pressure switch has the pins labeled right on the plastic. They're kind of hard to see for the video. So I label uh, the pin 12 on the on this side here, pin 11 on the right. The middle one is 14. On the opposite side, we have 22, 21, and 24 in the middle. Uh, the clips are already connected to pins 11 and 12, and they're going to my multimeter, where I'm going to set, set it up into the ohm meter setting right here. And if we're to believe this diagram right here, because this pressure switch should be normally closed, we should measure, you know, zero ohms between pin 11 and pin 12. So let's see if that's the case. And there we go, we got zero ohms between the pin 11 and 12. That's good. The next piece that we wanna test is we wanna, you know, simulate water getting into the pressure switch, which should cause pins 11 and 12 to make contact. And at the same time, it should break 11 and 12. When there is no contact be between 11 and 12, we should be reading uh, an infinity number of ohms, you know, a very large number of ohms. And between 11 and 14, we should go back to zero ohms. All right, so I'm going to simulate now water entering the pressure switch by putting the screwdriver and putting some pressure on it, which should activate the switch that's inside and it should break contact between pins 11 and 12. You'll hear a click when I put that pressure. There's a click. You could look at the ohm meter. It's saying 0.L, which is the sign for infinity. So in fact, between 11 and 12, we have no connectivity at all. That's what you're expected to see. So that side so far is looking good there. Next, we're gonna move the pins to 14 and continue the measurement there. Okay, so I've now moved one of the leads to pin 14. The other one remain on pin 11. Uh, we're here, we're, we're now supposed to measure the resistance between pins and 11 and 12. Because it's normally open, we would expect the resistance to, to be an open circuit or infinity sign right here and that confirms that it's working as expected. Next, we're going to now simulate the water pressure by closing the switch. And when that happens, we will expect that 1114 closes and the resistance should be zero ohms. So here I'm simulating the water entering. You'll hear a click. There's the click. And now you should see zero ohms be measured here. That tells me that the circuit is complete and it's working as expected. So at this point, we have tested the neutral side of the circuit. We can see that 11 and 12 are working fine and 11 and 14 are also working fine. Next, we're gonna move to the line side and we should expect the same behavior in terms of the zero ohms or the infinity numbers. I got my alligator clips on pins 21 and 22 which if you look at the diagram means that it's normally closed at circuit. Therefore, in the ohm meter, we should be reading zero ohms 
and that's correct. Uh, next, I'll simulate putting a water pressure in. We should break contact between 21 and 22, and we should read then uh, an open circuit or a large number of ohms. Next, I'm going to simulate water entering the pressure switch, which should break the contacts between 21 and 22. And at that point, we should be able to read an open circuit or 0.L like we saw on the other side. Let's try that. You'll hear the click when that happens. There's the click. There's the OL, but ah, what do you know? We are still reading some resistance here. So it's not a completely open circuit like you would expect. There's still current flowing through there, which is likely confusing the uh, motherboard. So let's try that again. It should go back to zero ohms because now we have the circuit closed. We're gonna open it and it should say zero L, but no, oh, it is going back to some seven mega ohms. So that right there is showing that this side is not working as expected and it's likely what's stripping up the computer on the other side. Let's do one more test with the other pins, but right now I'm feeling very comfortable that this part is the culprit for the F24 and F14 codes. I've now moved the uh, clips to pins 21 and 24. 21 and 24 without any water pressure in it should be an open circuit, so we should be reading 0L. And if you look at the ohm meter, hey, what do you know? It's still measuring some resistance there of 8 mega ohms. That's also not supposed to happen. We should have seen zero L. So again, that's an indication that there's still contact there when there shouldn't be. Now, if we put that, simulate the water going in, we should close that circuit and 21 and 22 are reading zero ohm, so that's fine. That piece is fine. But we can see that when there's no water pressure in there, we are still measuring some uh, Resistance. If you're measuring resistance going through there, that means a current is going to flow to the board and it's likely again the culprit for confusing the computer and telling you that you have a fault. So at this point, super convinced that this part is bad and you know we replaced it and it works now as expected.